YouTube, my name is Danica and today I want to talk about diverse books. So you've probably heard of the We Need Diverse Books campaign by now. It's been talked about on Rincey's channel, Rincey Reads, and Jessie at Cuff of Books, and they're both excellent. You should definitely check out their videos. I'll link them below. If you hadn't, basically it started off as a response to BookCon, which is a convention about books, that put on a panel of basically the best young adult authors, supposedly, and it was all white men, and there was a bit of a backlash from this, and especially when BookCon's guest list had, at the time, about 30 authors and no people of color, though one cat. So in response, there's the Diversify Your Shelves and We Need Diverse Books campaign, which talks about why we need diverse books and encourages you to go out and buy diverse books and support people who are writing diverse books. So even though I'm a little bit late to the game, I wanted to make a video about diversifying your reads and specifically about intersectionally diverse books. So intersectional is a word that in this context means different identities that intersect. So being a black woman means that you experience racism and sexism, but it's not just a matter of adding together the experiences of racism and sexism. They're a different experience together and how they intersect affects that experience. So I wanted to talk about some books that are diverse and that they talk about intersecting identities. Specifically, obviously I read a lot of lesbian books, but I'm trying to diversify that by reading more people of color, including people of color who are writing lesbian books. So I wanted to talk about some of my favorite people of color lesbian books as well as some that I'm looking forward to reading. I definitely want to commit to reading more People of Color, especially in the next year. I know that's six months from now, but I do better with set time periods. So I'm actually thinking that in 2015 I'm going to be trying to read all People of Color and see how that goes, but ideally I think I would like to have kind of a 50-50 ratio, which I do definitely do not have now. I want to talk about some people of color lesbian books because I found myself kind of hiding behind this idea of, oh well I read lesbian books and that's already a smaller proportion of books and isn't that already diverse, but that's really a terrible excuse and I know it was a terrible excuse because there are tons of great books out there that are talking about intersecting identities, that are talking about being a person of color and queer and disabled, and all different kinds of combinations of things. So these are some books that are by or about queer women of color that I really enjoy. So the first author I wanted to talk about, really obvious just to get it out of the way, because I've already been talking about her a lot, and that's Melinda Lowe. I've been raving about adaptation and inheritance duology. It is fantastic. It's teen sci-fi that's influenced by the X-Files. It's really fast-paced. It's queer. It also has kind of a diverse group of characters. The main character is white and bisexual, but one of her loved interests is Chinese, and her best friend is a black gay guy who is obsessed with conspiracy theories, and just in all it has a diverse cast, and it's also by a queer woman of color. Obviously, I love this book. Definitely pick it up. Melangelo has also written Huntress and Ash, which are more fairy tale books that are also influenced by Chinese mythology. Ash is a bisexual Cinderella retelling. It is very good. I still liked Adaptation better, but it depends on your interests. If you like fairy tale retellings, definitely try Ash and then Huntress if you liked that. They're set in the same world, but they don't have the same characters. So Melinda Lowe is definitely an author I would recommend. When We Were Outlaws by Gian Cordova. This is a story about a lesbian activist in the 70s who's also Latina. And it's just a fantastic read. It's such an interesting community happening in this book. So it's very personal in some ways. It's about her different romances, but it's also about these really big political ideas. So this one I really loved and I would recommend. Next we have Miss Tim in School for Girls by Nyana Kurumboy. This is a really interesting 
almost a mystery, it's kind of a murder mystery, that's about a teacher at a boarding school and her trying to figure out what happened when one of the students dies. It's set in the 1970s in India and the main character has two different love interests, one a man and one a woman, and they're both very interesting. It has such a great mystery feel. It feels very tense and atmospheric. You can really feel the heat in the monsoon season. I read this last year during the 24-hour readathon and it was such a great story to just be immersed in. Next we have another memoir and I just have to point out that I didn't notice that this memoir is subtitled A Memoir of Love and Revolution. And this one is subtitled A Memoir of Love and Revolution. So apparently I like memoirs about love and revolution. But this one is Before the Rain. And this is in the 80s. It's also a Latina writer. And she is a reporter and lots of this book is spent traveling around the world and is also about this very intense love affair she has. It is deeply emotional, almost over dramatic, but again it's very atmospheric. You can really feel what it's like to be in these highly charged political situations, but also these really personal relationships that are just as charged. So if you like that kind of story, I would definitely recommend this one. And then I wanted to talk about Prairie Ostrich by Tamaya Kobayashi. This is a young adult book. It's actually about an eight-year-old kid, but it's also just as much about her older sister who's having this lesbian relationship. It's about this Japanese-Canadian family in the 1970s on the prairies in Canada and them dealing with the death of Egg, the main character's brother. It is a very powerful, very emotional book. It's about Egg who is trying to deal with all of these emotions of the adults around them and still being a child and not really being able to understand what's happening, but feeling all of these emotions regardless and just trying to sort out her life and her family and how to make things better and how to make things go back to how they were before and it's really heartbreaking. It's a beautiful book. Lastly, I have to talk about Revolutionary Girl Utena, which I've talked about before. This is a manga that's also a TV show that's also a movie and it is deeply weird. It's similar to Sailor Moon in some ways. There's a lot of kind of disturbing stuff happening in here. There is incest. There is just really almost magical realism stuff. You don't understand what's happening a lot of the time. But the characters are so interesting and so strong. So the main character is Utena, who is kind of saved by a prince when she's a kid and she's so impressed by this that she decides she's going to grow up to become a prince as well. There's a lot of mostly just lesbian subtext in this story, I will admit. In some incarnations it's less sub and more text. But it's such an interesting story. There's so much going on here and it's filled with so much symbolism and metaphor that no matter how many times you watch the show or read the manga, you're going to get more out of it each time. I think this might be the media series that I have found the most interesting to discuss that I can pull the most out of. And I've spent a lot of time discussing Harry Potter, but this leaves a lot more up to interpretation. I would recommend giving it a try. So those are some of the books that I have been enjoying, but I also wanted to talk about some of the ones that are on my to-read shelf if you want some more suggestions. So these are some of the ones I'm looking forward to. I haven't read The Color Purple by Alice Walker yet, and that is sad. It's a lesbian classic. It's just a classic in general, and it deals with racism, and it deals with sexuality and sexism. If we're going to be talking about intersectional reads, I think this is a must read and I'm ashamed that I haven't read it yet. So Serious Blooms at Night by Shani Mutu is another one I've been looking forward to for a long time. I don't know a lot about it. All I've really heard is that it is beautifully written and that the relationships are so detailed and rich. But I know it's about different generations of a family and that there is 
I think a little bit of a subtextual lesbian relationship. I'm not sure exactly how the lesbian content in this book plays out, but I've heard only good things about this one. Next I have Coffee Will Make You Black by April Sinclair. This is about growing up black in New York in the 70s and then finding out that she is lesbian. This one's supposed to be funny but also very powerful and interesting, so looking forward to that one too. This is Jonestown and Other Madness by Pat Parker, which is a collection of poetry. In one of the memoirs I was reading, it was talking about how at the same time that Audre Lorde was writing, I also need to read Audre Lorde. That's also on my list, but I don't have a physical copy. Anyway, the same time Audre Lorde was writing poetry, Pat Parker was as well, who is another lesbian black poet, but she is not recognized as much, even though at the time they were kind of thought of as contemporaries. Read a couple of little excerpts of Pat Parker's poems and they seem really great, so I can't wait to dive into this one. So I have read one of Nalo Hopkinson's other books, The Salt Roads, and I loved that one. I don't have a physical copy, which is why I didn't show it, but it is a really excellent book about, about tons of things. I don't even know if I can explain it. It is kind of about the spirit that inhabits different bodies, it's about slavery. A lot of it is about racism, and there's also lots of queer characters. It was just excellent. I'm looking forward to reading all of Nalo Hopkinson's other books, but the one I have here is The Chaos, which is a teen dystopian book. I think I heard that there are like yetis in this book or something? I might be wrong, and that will seem like a really weird thing to say about a book. I love teen dystopian books, and I already love Nayla Hopkinson's writing, so this one is definitely going to be a good one. Then we have The World Unseen by Shamim Sharif. I have watched the movie version of one of her other books, I Can't Think Straight, and she both wrote the book and directed the movie, so I think it is probably pretty faithful to the book. And I loved that movie, it's one of my favorite lesbian movies, so I am just as excited to read this book. And it's kind of a lesbian romance set in 1950s South Africa, so it should definitely be an interesting read. Next we have We Came All the Way from Cuba So You Could Dress Like This, which is a collection of short stories by Akio Bejas. I've really been looking forward to this one. It's supposed to be kind of a mix of themes about immigrants and queer people, and it's one I've heard a lot of recommendations for. Lastly on my shelf is The Other Side of Paradise by Stacey Ann Chin. I've watched a lot of videos of Stacey Ann Chin talking and reading out her work, and I really enjoy what she has to say and her presence on stage, so I'm sure that her memoir will be a fantastic read. This is one I was very excited to find in the bookstore, and I am looking forward to reading it. So those are some of the women of color lesbian books that I have been enjoying and I'm looking forward to reading. Let me know if you have any recommendations of more intersectional reads. I think all of us can diversify our shelves. I think we all need more diverse books. And I think a lot of the Diverse Books campaign has been about people being able to find themselves in books, which I completely agree with, and that's why lesbian books are my passion. But I think it's equally important to find other people in books. When we read, we enter other people's lives, and it gives us an opportunity to walk around in their shoes to see how people think from the inside which I don't think you get to the same extent with different media, though that's also important. But I think part of the reason that we all need to read more diverse books is to experience other people's lives and to encourage more empathy for other people. As much as it is great to read about people like you that you can relate to, we also need to be able to relate to a large number of people, so I think it's just as important to branch out and try to find people who don't think like you and who don't look like you and who don't act like you, because then you can recognize what you have in common and also recognize that people aren't all the same. That should be a really basic thing, but 
I think that we can all still use that. So I'm going to be making it a point, especially in the year to come, to be reading more diverse books, and I hope that people will be joining me in that. So thank you for watching this video. Bye!